And welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending November 21st, 2020. That's right. Um, this week, a couple of well-known and well-loved creators tease new projects. Yay! During last weekend's Gunpla Expo Tokyo 2020, a producer from Sunrise revealed that Gundam creator Yoshiki Tomino is currently preparing not one, but three new projects for after he finishes the Gundam Reconquista in G compilation films. Apparently, Tomino will have more to say himself after some preparation. So we probably have to wait a little bit. Um, the Gundam Reconquista films have five planned installments. The first opened in November 2019 and second in February of this year. The third is set to open next summer, so we, again, we have a while to wait. Manga creator Naoki Urasawa also teased a new project this week. In the author's comments of the most recent weekly Big Comic Spirits magazine, he commented, quote, I'm making an anime! I hope to be able to show it to everyone soon, end quote. We hope so, too. Uh, Urasawa has been making manga since 1981, best known for 20th and 21st Century Boys, Monster, and Pluto. His most recent series, Asadora, began in October of 2018, and will begin publication in English starting in January. And yes, several of his works have already been uh, made into anime. We'll see. Pluto has been rumored for a while. We hadn't heard anything about it, so who knows. Uh, the Code Geass franchise also teased a new entry this week. The official Twitter account revealed that a new project in the series will be unveiled through a YouTube live stream on December 5th, so fans will have to keep an eye out for that event soon. The most recent entry in the series was the film Code Geass Lelouch of the Re... something called Zurection, which is producer described as phase one of a ten-year plan for new content in the franchise because, of course, Mecha. Um, so a lot of new stuff potentially coming down the pike. Any of that stuff sort of catch your eye? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I have a special place in my heart for code. Yes. Um, I don't know why I like it as much as I do, but I do. Um, okay. so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but 10 years, okay. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a lot. I, I don't know how I feel about that. How Oof. I feel about that. Um, Irasawa, uh, I love, love, love 20th Century Boys. Mm. That is amazing. I love the live action movies. Um, oh, you've seen just, this? Cool. Yeah, it's, it's just so... Uh, I, I don't even know how to explain it. it, it it's, it's just, it's just, just a really dystopian kind of story mm. and it has it has you know all the like the ultraman kind of big big kaiju robots mm. and then just like all these just like happenings going on and, and they're just mm. the, and it's just like this mystery that they're trying to solve and it goes across generations and mm. it's about a small group of boys who used to play a game and they have one book and they used to write in the book about their adventures and then they refine the book after many years mm. of yeah, after they grew up, and in the end, um, friend, apparently this guy named friend put in stuff that he's going to take over and destroy the world, uh, and it kind of goes on from there. And they're trying to figure out who friend is, and they believe it's a member of their own group mm. that even back then, as a child, was deciding that eh, I'm going to take over the world and just. Mm. <laughs> so I'm. I'll be just curious to see what else he does. His his stuff is usually very interesting. It's not. Um, it's it's like almost its own genre. His stuff that he does. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and if you like manga, he has a series called Naoki Urasawa no Manben, or or Urasawa Naoki no Manben, where he goes and um, films other mangaka at work, and then talks to them about it. Which is yeah, wonderful. interesting. Very, yeah, that's it. But that's not all. Um, if you order now, no way. Um, fans of Haruhi Suzumiya and the antics of the SOS Brigade have been eagerly awaiting next week's publication of The Intuition of Haruhi Suzumiya, the first new novel in the series in nine years. This week, the official website for the series anime adaptation had an update teasing a new activity schedule for the SOS Brigade, as well as a voiced announcement from Haruhi herself announcing the new upcoming activity. 
the message on the website says, this case ain't fiction, it's non-fiction, something will start on November 25th. Knowing Haruhi, it's going to be a ride. Um, also included in this, in this schedule is the announcement of a special live something from the fictional band Enos to take place on November 28th. This is the band that Haruhi played in in season one, the school band thing. Um, to celebrate the release of the novel, Karakawa's light novel recommendation site, Kimirano, is also running a special eight-day campaign to release the full novel series for free online, though only in Japanese. Um, the three novels released at a time on various days remaining until the 27th. So, we've got something Halloween coming. I'm going to have to brush up on my Halloween dance. Yep. Dang it. Exactly. <laughs> I still have to watch. What, what's the series? What, what, what do I have to watch in order again? Um, season one, oh, season two, eight. and then the movie Broadcast Order. Broadcast order. And yep. then I'll memorize the dance, and then I'll there just, mm-hmm. I'll, put, I'll put it on for you all to see, and you, you can be horribly aghast nice. at what I do. And so, and here's the thing: um, the anime has only adapted, has not adapted all the light novels. There's plenty of content in the light novels not yet adapted, so there's plenty of room, in other words, for whatever they go to adapt. Um, and it's it's kind of curious to see where that goes, uh, especially considering this was Kyoto yeah. Animation's kind of breakout anime. Um, there's a lot of, of opportunity there for them, and folks have been wondering when are they going to go back and finish the rest of and get more of the, the story and explain what's going on here. Because <laughs> um, there are plenty of mysteries. There, there are whole characters in the light novel series that have never showed up in the anime. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, because they just haven't gotten to it. Oh, come on, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Hustle up, yep. let's go. Yep. Get it together. Um, Especially considering what they've kind of revealed about some of the the well, anyway. Um, yay, poor Harvey. Um, in person conventions and events may have been a distant memory for quite a while now, but as of this yeah. week, uh, manga fans in Japan might have a real event to look forward to. It was announced that Comic Market Ninety Nine will be held at its usual Tokyo Big Site venue, May second through fifth of twenty twenty one, though with significant restrictions in place. The biannual Dojinshi and Manga event usually draws upwards of 200,000 attendees per day, but capacity restrictions will limit this event to only tens of thousands per day. So the staff thinks it's extremely likely that a lottery will determine who will be able to participate. Um, Though the lottery will likely determine the final selection of participants, all general attendees will have to purchase participation certificates to even be eligible. Um, attendees must uh, properly wear masks when attending and also requested to use the government's COVID-19 contact tracing app. Uh, it was also noted that people who live in prefectures with heightened COVID precautions, as well as those countries Japan isn't currently issuing visas to, won't be able to attend at all. The planning uh-huh. committee also noted they are considering projects for the 45th anniversary of the event in December using the Air Comic Hat concept that it used for last summer's event. So it's always nice to get um, uh, when, for comic to say, yes, we're coming back, we're doing this thing. It's obviously disappointing that it's not going to be the usual, you know, <clears throat> body-crushing typical event. Um, <laughs> but I think it's what it has to be, right? Well, the interesting part, too, is like that little thing where the prefectures that are particularly hard hit, that they're going to restrict those. As yeah. soon as this announcement was made, everybody and their brother is like, oh, I had this guy I went to school with in, yeah. like, third yeah. grade. And he lived in, like, such and such a place. I'm going to call him. Can I use your address? I just need to send, like, some correspondence from there, uh, if that's cool. And I, I like the fact that you have to buy a certificate Forget. to take a chance yep. to get in. Mm-hmm. So they make the money. No matter Amor. whether you go or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool in mm. a really tricky, devious way. Yes. I mean, granted, that is the typical model for a lot of events in Japan. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. That you buy a chance for a lottery? Do you oh, yeah. Have to pay? Oh, do you have to pay oh. then once you win? Oh, no. If, if you're a fan of an idol, what they'll do is for their next concert, they will have random tickets in CDs. Oh. So you have to buy c- – oh, actually, not even CD. tickets – you buy coupons. You, there are coupons in the album. You have to okay. buy the album, 
each coupon is a chance for for a um, to get to go to a uh, an event where you get to stand in line for one of the tickets. Uh. So you buy like forty CDs to get <laughs> enough of the the things to ensure that you can actually go to the event and hope that you get there early <laughs> enough to actually get one of the tickets for their concerts. Yeah. Oh, for the world. So, so I'm thinking of the, the previous wow. Oticons I've been to trying to get into the AMV or whatever the new movie is and having that one person in front of me who is like always counting the people ahead of them, you know? <laughs> yep. and, yeah. then saying, and then saying something weird to the effect of like going, if I don't get in, there's going to be a riot. And I just want to go over and just go, no, there won't. There won't be any riot. I'm going to get in. You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Well, this is but, a, but, but think about the plus, interesting, though. and that must be why eBay has such a trade in like a lot of weird <laughs> CDs. <laughs> like, I'm going to keep one, and then the spare one will be in the, you know, prime area in the house that's kept pristine mm-hmm. and i'm selling 38 others mm-hmm. why did the hell did i do that yeah well it, it it does kind of um lessen the amount of fanboy funk at these true if they, if they go from you know from a hundred thousand down to it is only, worth it for that only twenty thousand. and speaking of of like bodies crushed together the unwashed masses yeah you know it's just kind of like um you know, I wanted to be here as much as you do, but I actually woke up early so I could take the shower before I get, get, get here. Because, you know. I uh, wonder how weird it's going to be being in Tokyo Big Sight when you're one of 10,000 people. Yeah. It'll be like a you, holiday vacation. Exactly. 200,000 people. Well, you know what it's going to be like? I'll tell you what it's going to be like. It's going to be like the Otakon after the riots. Hmm. That's what happened because okay. the, the the previous Otakons were hitting um, upwards to thirty to thirty three thousand, which maxed out uh, the BCC here, mm-hmm. and um, then the riots happened, and it dropped. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, like twenty three thousand. So there's seven thousand wow. people that weren't there. Yeah. So it dropped down to about twenty two, twenty three thousand, and you could, and you could tell just like that mm. just walking in like i could walk around i was like god this is like 2004 <laughs> you know you know when nobody I was remember those days and, yep or mm. you know and there was just plenty of room and mm. all this or it'd be like you were going to like when how jam-packed the, this bcc was and then you go to the to the dc mm-hmm. um, convention center and the thing is so large and it's so big and so roomy that you know you don't feel that mm. claustrophobia so it, it must be like must be a dream for them because usually they're probably like you know jostling well, around the camp and whatnot, and then you just have room to just be able to stop. It well, he, here's the other thing: like when you're one of two hundred thousand other people, and you want to get the latest, uh, you know, uh, fate Dunchi from whatever, you better get there quick because they're going to sell out in an hour. Yeah, yep. They might not anymore. If you get in. <laughs> Right, you get it. You're yeah. gonna get it. So the lucky ones are gonna have pick of the litter for so many of these ajinchi because you know there's no reason for the circles to, you know, only print ten copies. They might as well print right. you know pretty pretty normal uh, stock. So that's gonna be really exciting for those folks who get in and suddenly oh I have a chance to get that thing. And then they're gonna realize the curse of the otaku. I don't have enough money to buy well, everything. Yeah, you will never have. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's another. There will there oh. will be a very lively trade in Jojinji afterwards. Oh, well, I yeah. guess. I guess the tables are six feet, aren't they? I'm wondering about capacity for the vendors. Ooh, ooh. I mean, I'm assuming. I would bet they're going to do one every other space. But I mean, so I what, believe well, a typical table, table would be eight feet. Yeah, but you you typically have multiple people. So get, what they'll probably do is say, you know, it'll be the same capacity in terms of number of circles, but you can only have like one person in your booth at a time. Yeah, yeah. you can't have you can't have yeah. mm-hmm. all those folks. Uh, Dang, 
which will really bottleneck a lot of things if you have a ton of people who want that particular mm -hmm. piece. Yeah, right. Because you only have one person trying to trade things and do things. You don't have a helper. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Um, especially when that person is the artist or whatever, yeah. you know, because they're there yeah. to shake hands. Well, not shake hands anymore, but say hi. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, I drew this. It's very nice to meet you. I don't know. It's great. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll... Or they could do the Trump thing and they could just grab a whole bunch of stuff and just go Ugh, and just throw it into the crowd. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, just have at it. That works. Because you know, I'll bet that's going to happen. Yeah, it works. Um, what, what what I'm also curious to, to see is what, what the um, um, major company presence is going to be, like the booths for mm -hmm. you know Katakawa yeah. and all those companies. Um, I wonder what they'll do because again, you can't have you know a bazillion employees there, but you can have a presence. So why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm. Automated booth where it's just a little kiosk with a screen. <laughs> That's we it. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Kadakawa. Please press one. <laughs> You're in English. Sure. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> now, in the near future, a group of people will be able to say they studied anime and manga in college, and it won't just be a joke. Kaishi Professional University announced this week that its new anime and manga department... Oops. I should switch over. There we go. Now you can see what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, the Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science, and Technology... That's a mouthful. Officially approved the creation of the department on the 16th. So it's scheduled to launch in April of 2021 with a capacity of 80 students. That's 8-0. Applicants uh, to, to the, or application to the program will open on December 1st. And the first entrance exam will be held on December 9th, um, 19th, rather. So, yay, college entrance exams. Uh, the students will learn the theory and practice of creating manga and anime from leading creators in the field, including professional animators and anime directors, manga artists and illustrators, and game creators, as well as animation and manga researchers. The private Kaishi Professional University just opened in April of this year and also features a business creation department and an information studies department. I've got to ask, um, no, you know, no disrespect intended, but why do you think they're doing this? Money. Money. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> well, it's, but, it's a private university. Mm -hmm, so, I, you know, not knowing what their standards are, but, you know, if you're in this for a profit, mm -hmm. perhaps you're targeting an audience of people who that might be their best chance of actually getting a degree mm. i don't mean that in an insulting kind of way but it's mm -hmm. like they're not going to be the ones that are going to be doing physics they're not going to be rocket scientists that this might mm -hmm. be something that's sort of in the media communications kind of field that might yeah. be enough for them to come out the other side with some kind of degree of something mm -hmm. true like like ethnomusicology <laughs> yeah <laughs> clapping, <laughs> clapping for credit hey, yeah. here's the night. Yeah. um i i would hope I would like to be wrong in that and hope that this represents yeah. like a real change in the opinion of the of the the world of manga and anime and that really now it's like nope you know for all the years that people make fun of this this is full on legit so let's mm -hmm. make this a career track that's that's totally you know mm -hmm. credited and and you can put the cat skin on the wall and people will be like yes i am proud of this thing that i've done mm -hmm. and bring that out from the you know smoky back alleyways <laughs> and, and and to be clear there are like manga and anime like crash courses you can go and you can do a like a a three month you know thing at a um um frankly some classroom in some building somewhere that you know, you pay for, but it's it's the equivalent of like a a, a coding boot camp, right? Where you're gonna sit down, you're gonna learn all this stuff, yeah. um, and you know, look at what happened with Cal Arts when Disney invested in that animation program, yeah. and we got John Lasseter, we got uh, Tim Burton, all sorts of you know great lights out of that program. Hey, you know, it can work. Well, it just for. You know, again, <laughs> like in the back of my head is a little scene playing when Krusty the Clown needed money, mm. so he founded the Krusty the Clown Clown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just mm. like a 
horrible scam. Mm. And so I hope it's not like that. Yeah. You know, mm. somebody just stands in front of the class and goes, this is manga. They are pictures. You draw them. Thank you. As soon as your, your check clears, you're all going to get a diploma. And I, like, what? Mm. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it, 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 there are scams like that. When I worked for the opera, we actually had people who would be voice teachers. Mm-hmm. And help people make their um, audition tapes, and say so they, you know, that this is what you would send to opera houses to mm-hmm. try and get parts to to, to audition. Mm-hmm. And some of this caterwauling that you would hear is just like mm-hmm. just horrendous. Like somebody singing clearly in their shower because they think it's a good way to have a studio. Uh. So you know, you hear this stuff, and it's just like. And the, you know, I had to get up from my desk at one, one point and just go, "What is this?" And the, the woman there who was who had the luxury of listening to all this bad singing mm. said, "This is what happens when voice act, uh, when voice um, teachers are just doing it for the paycheck and they need to make rent. They just mm. come in, and they bring somebody in, and just say for four hours a week." Or you know, total of four hours a week, mm. and then after a month, just go. Okay, you're ready. Let's make an audition tape, and I'm done with you. Your check cleared. Bye bye. Yeah. And you know, so yeah, I, I feel you, John. I, I, it's like part of it. This is like, oh, that stick figure. It looks just like a Zaku. <laughs> yes, you nailed it perfectly. Mm-hmm. Now go and try and find a job. Good luck. Which I think. <laughs> Which I think is why when they announced that they're like, we're going to have directors in here, we're going to have animators yeah. in here, yeah. we're going to fo- have folks from the industry, so there's at least that much oversight. Um, Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, you know, like Steve saying, like, student A, come into my office. You are brilliant. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. You're ready to go. Student B, please come in. You're great. You're brilliant. <laughs> the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. On you go. Student C? <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. (laughs) You guys are so cynical. (laughs) Yes, we're jaded. And I cannot keep my mic up. Ah. Ah. I was promised to be the lead voice actor in Robotech. I got ripped away from me. I am jaded. Clearly. (laughs) Even though I was only 14. (laughs) Also this week, some news items that uh, we'll cover. We may not have anything to say about it, but we... We'll see. Other uh, things worth mentioning. Akita Shoten's Champion Red magazine revealed this week that a new manga is coming in the Saint Seiya franchise. The new Saint Seiya Meioiden Dark Wing manga will debut in the magazine's next issue, December 19th, with Kenji Saito doing the writing and Shinshu Ueda doing the illustration. Um, the story will center on who else? An ordinary high school boy who suddenly wakes up in the land of the dead. Um... The original Saint Seiya manga ran from 86 to 1990 and inspired, obviously, a number of anime series, films, OVAs, spinoffs, etc. Another week, another fantasy light novel turned anime. Katakawa announced that Zeppon and Yasumo's Banished from the Heroes Party slice of life light novel series is inspired, inspiring a TV anime uh, adaptation. The story follows Red, who used to be a member of the powerful Heroes Party that saved the world from the evil demon lord until he was kicked out from, by one of his comrades. His new goal becomes to live a simple life on the frontier and open an apothecary shop, but keeping his past a secret is harder than he thinks, especially when a beautiful adventurer from his past shows up and asks to live with him, because that's how that works. Um, uh, it, be, it began serialization online in October of 2017, so it's relatively new, uh, but the seventh volume was published last summer, so they've been cranking them out. Uh, an, an anime adaptation is also in the works for Kanojo Mo Kanojo, uh, the, it'll be sometime in 2021. This will be um, Hiroyuki's fourth uh, work to receive an anime after Aho Girl, the comic artist and his assistants, and Dojin work. The neo-romantic comedy launched on March 4th and centers on, on first-year high schooler Naoya. He and his longtime crush begin dating, and his life is full of happiness until one day another beautiful girl confesses to him, because again, that's how that works. He tells her he has a girlfriend already, but she suggests they talk to her about him dating them both at the same time. That is not how it works. Um, The girls then hit it off, and while the original girlfriend is understandably reluctant at first, she eventually agrees. Yeah. Um, Boy's Life manga 
Sasaki and Miyano is also getting an anime adaptation with more details to be revealed in next month's monthly comic Gene issue on December 13th. Uh, the story is about a feisty BL comic fan and his delinquent senior Sasaki. Um, it's also inspired a novel adaptation, interestingly enough, plus a spin off manga. Uh, a new anime was also announced from Comic Festa this week. This will adapt Iburo's Jimmy Hen manga. It'll premiere on TV and the Comic Festa website on January 3rd. It follows a relationship with two co- uh, office co workers. The girl, Reina, seems like the plainest woman at the company when in her work clothes, but becomes a stunning beauty when she dresses up outside of work. Um, like previous Comic Festa anime, it will have two versions the normal on air edition and a premium edition on the website. Uh huh. Um, Finally, in anime news, uh, the Zetsumetsu Kikushun Endangered Species Character Brand is inspiring a net anime. That is a sequence of words I did not expect to, to uh, string together today. Um, it'll premiere on Nico Nico Doga in December. It focuses on the more than 3,000 endangered species in the world and also includes a short net anime episode on YouTube with a manga serialized on Twitter. A creative unit from Katakawa and Geek Pictures called Kiji Mania have been planning and developing the character brand. Now, the cover designer for the long-running Koro Koro Comics manga magazine received a Guinness World Record this week as the longest-running cover designer for a children's magazine. Tarichi Sasaki has been working on the Koro Koro covers, hard to say, for 34 years since January 1986. The magazine, whose target audience is elementary school boys, began in 1977 as a place to publish Doraemon, which gives you an idea... Um, in his response, Sasaki fervently thanked the editorial staff and commented, quote, My parents gave me a strong body that's lasted for 74 years. How can I extend this record? I'm going to keep doing this till I go senile. End quote. That's awesome. Finally, uh, some sad news this week. Prolific voice actor Kirby Morrow passed away unexpectedly this week at the age of only 47. He worked as a stage and screen actor and also voiced in many anime series, including Goku in the Ocean Double Dragon Ball Z, Troa Barton in Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, and Miroku in Inuyasha, which he just recently reprised in the currently airing Yashihime Princess Half Demon. His family addressed his fans in the announcement, saying, quote, Kirby was a busted and talented individual who brought joy to so many, um, but thrived off all your love and friendship. He lived for it, and it fueled him every day. Rest in peace, Kirby Morrow. 